Here we are, once again, another week of wrestling, just 48 hours from the smashing success that was All In, and we are here to talk about Raw. Man, when you put it that way, it's really depressing. Right? I haven't even watched All In yet. You can go back and check out my review of All In, because I got to watch it. Uh, but yeah, let's let's talk about Raw. Uh, we open up with Braun, uh, Dolph, and Drew coming out, and Braun reminding us of the destruction that they laid on the shield last week, and essentially saying that they wanted to do it again. So the shield comes out, and like, all right, yeah, we'll fucking do it again. But then Baron Corbin just starts sending waves yeah. of Raw stars to break up the fight. They all go down like chumps. Yeah. Like, the shield's just taking, like, groups of six out at a time. Which... In theory is fine, but, like, everyone was out after one hit. Yeah. Like, The Revival and uh, uh, Heath Slater and Rhino makes yeah. sense. But, yeah, people like Apollo Crews, like... Well, and it's... The Shield's one of those forces. I don't actually mind them taking out everyone they come across. Because that's fine. But normally, even if it's, like, six on three. But, like, it's just it was just one punch and they were down. Yeah, yeah. It, there was no there was no struggle for yeah. the shield. So eventually, this leads to this big separation of uh, you know Braun and company and the shield and everything. And for some reason, this leads to the shield getting arrested. Yeah. Um, granted, they did punch a lot of people in the roster, but, but Baron that Corbin happens sent- every week. Yeah. So essentially, so yeah, the shield ends up getting arrested. Um, and we'll talk more about that in a second. But we had the Bella Twins return, return to tag team action and defeat the Riot Squad. Oh, that was a match. Uh, Bree, I hope you're okay. Yeah. Dan- Daniel, take care of her. Um, Baron Corbin ended up making the main event between him and Finn Balor because Finn's like, hey, you know what? Y- you you can prove yourself uh, against you know Finn the man, but you know I need to be ready too. So hey, let's have another match. And Corbin's like, okay. It'll be the main event. Yep. That's what the world wants. Then we had the new tandem of Bobby Roode and Chad Gable defeat the Ascension. Yeah. That, all for Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. I mean, yeah. But, but I wish... But poor, poor yeah. Ascension. Uh, we had Elias playing some music, and he was interrupted by a beautiful blonde woman again. Uh, this week it was Alexa Bliss, uh, along with uh, Mickey James and Alicia Fox. This ended up leading into... Uh, Alexa Bliss versus Natalia. Alexa Bliss defeating Natalia with Ronda's own armbar. Yeah. Uh, Ronda at ringside to watch it. Then there was a beatdown on Natty. There was a beatdown on Ronda. And it was and so Ronda kind of ended up getting the better. Uh, she uh, essentially Alexa and company started like actually backing away. So yeah. Ronda kind of won, but everyone got fucked up a little bit. Uh, we then had the Bellas talk to Ronda like, "Hey, if you need." Are they? I feel like they're really subtly and terribly building the idea of Nikki versus Ronda. Yeah, that's the rumored match for Evolution. Is yeah Nikki versus Ronda, which I don't like, but I guess WWE sees them as their two biggest mainstream stars, so it makes sense. I mean, from a TV standpoint, right. Nikki Bella is one yeah, of the best. Like, it it does make sense. They like, are Ron- Ronda and anybody makes sense. Yeah. But okay. Like, I would, it's just Ronda has to defend the title. Yeah. I would prefer Ronda versus Charlotte, but whatever. Yeah. So anyway, this has now led to a tag team match next week where Ronda and Natty will take on Alexa Bliss and Alicia Fox. Uh, Dolph, Drew, and Braun are like, hey, since the Shield's gone, we kind of all want to have matches. And Dolph says, I can't have my Intercontinental title match that I have coming up in two weeks tonight. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I want to... I, how about we get a tag title match? And Corbin's like, well, we've already kind of built the revival. And Drew's like, well, hypothetically... What if we killed them? <laughs> essentially. Uh, so, and this... And Corbin's they, like, sure, you can kill a guy. Yeah. They, <laughs> I just had three people arrested, but you can that, kill a that's guy. A, that's the thing. Baron Corbin, like, he decides what's okay and what yeah. isn't. Uh, because He's yeah, the Dolphin Drew uh, attacked the revival uh, and then defeated the B team for the tag team titles. Yeah. But then this left Braun with no one to face, and so Corbin's like, "Hey Finn, I'm just too busy to fight you tonight. You're gonna fight Braun instead." Yeah. 
Uh, quick note, we need to stop pinballing the tag titles around. Yeah. I feel like now that they're on Dolph and Drew, they'll probably have a good dominant run. Well, here's the thing. They built a storyline for the B team and the Revival. Yeah. The Revival had a legitimate reason to be going for the tag titles. Why give it to a different heel team when you had a heel team with a built-in storyline? Well, you can... I'm hoping what they're going to do is get B team and Revival in like a number one contender feud. Because that's something that WWE needs to start doing again, is actual contender feuds. Yeah. Um, Because they each now have a legitimate claim to a shot at the tag titles. I guess they could do a B tri- team they could do a triple threat. Yeah. Or just B team versus the revival winner. No, it'll be a f- it'll be a four way. They'll pinball it again because here we go. We have B team getting their rematch, the revival actually getting their tag team title match. It'll be Dolphin Drew defending and the wildcard team of Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. Mm, yeah. And Bobby Roode and Chad Gable will probably win. And we'll pinball a little bit more. Yeah, I want Good dominant champions with good long reigns. Speaking of tag teams and interesting decisions, apparently Paul Ellering has now been replaced by Drake Maverick. Yeah. Drake Maverick, the general manager of 205 Live and the manager of the Authors of Pain. Which I'm not necessarily against, but give me some reason. Yeah, we need some context here. Yeah. They beat jobbers. That happened. Uh, uh, HBK came out and was talking about uh, the match between The Undertaker and Triple H at uh, Super Showdown uh, and was very adamant that Triple H was going to win Yeah, and was just talking a bunch of trash about The Undertaker. Then The Undertaker came out and went, bitch, please. Yeah. Um, and we kind of maybe got set up for another Triple H or uh, Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker match. Maybe. Hopefully. Kind of. I don't know. And then and now and now next week we're gonna have Triple H react to that and Mick Foley's gonna Yep. The fuck? I thought next. Triple H was lying when he said the era was back, but yeah. apparently it fucking is. No, we are building up to Russell the next WrestleMania is just gonna be an attitude era show where we get all the biggest stars back for one more match. Okay. Well, so so should we expect that the following week we're gonna have the Rock and Stone Cold yeah. show up. Okay. Yeah, and at WrestleMania it will be Shawn Michaels versus Taker, Triple H versus Foley, and The Rock versus Stone Cold. Three of all the, last time ever. Three of the best feuds ever. I'm fine with it. I don't think uh, Mick is gonna go as well as he wants to, but whatever. Uh, Sasha and Bailey defeated Dana and Ember Moon. Uh, Dana uh, is fed up with Titus Worldwide. She ended yeah. up leaving him leaving them because they kept like telling her what to do and she's like shut up I can do this and then she lost to Sasha good old Bobby Lashley had a performance review yeah and apparently he's aggressive so he had a sit down what do they fucking call it uh, Med- meditation Seminar? Some, whatever Maybe. the fuck. He sat down, crisscross applesauce. I'm going to be honest, I already blacked this segment out. Even though Kevin Owens shows up later well, yeah. and like saves it. I, I, d- I, don't, I don't know what they were really going... It, it just it felt... Bobby Lashley was just trying to fuck with Sunil Singh and uh, Jinder. But then, yeah, Kevin Owens came out and saved the segment and beat the fuck out of Bobby Lashley. Yeah, we got an Abram powerbomb. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Welcome back to Raw. And then in the main event, Braun Strowman defeated Finn Balor. Go fucking figure. Yeah. Uh, then a triple beatdown on Finn Balor was interrupted by the Shield. And then the Shield was interrupted by getting their fucking asses kicked by half of the Raw roster. Yeah. Which, like we talked about, I like seeing the Shield vulnerable. Yes. I think that's something new for the group. Mm-hmm. But one. It's just weird the people that they selected for this. I don't see much of a reason for everyone to be there. But two, how did all of these people who went down after one punch earlier in the night suddenly just kick the shit out of the shield? Because they attacked the shield from behind. The like, shield, the shield saw them coming at the beginning of the night. Right. It's, but it, it don't worry. It, it, it still doesn't make any fucking yeah. sense. But that's that's essentially what they're going with as far as. This is the reason why. Right. They didn't realize that 
12 people were running up behind them, even though they probably could have heard it. But if they saw the 12 people running at them, they all know perfectly where to punch them. Right. They're like putties. You hit them in that one vulnerable spot and they just fucking explode. Did you like anything? Did you like anything about Raw? Uh, I think so, but I cannot remember. Well, there's, there's the notes. Yeah. You can, you can run through them. Um, I liked, I liked seeing Bobby Roode and Chad Gale as a team. CM CM Punk did it. CM Punk. (laughs) CM Punk's all out. We disagree on that, I guess. But, um, I don't know why they're a tag team. Yeah. Well, it's because they don't have anything for Chip. Right. They don't have anything for either of them. So we're like, hey, another throw together right. team for the tag division. And I don't like that as a thing, but I like both of these guys. And they are both really charismatic. So I am i don't necessarily like it tonight, but I like what it can potentially be. Yeah. I also don't I don't like that they had to kill the Ascension. Because yeah. the Ascension are a fucking team. Yeah. Why don't we just push the Ascension? Anyway, um, what did I like? What did I like? I like that Dana's just fucking up and done with Titus Worldwide. Go Dana. Independent woman. Do shit for yourself. Get a spot on Evolution. Let's do it. Um, no, I take that back. No, I like Kevin Owens beating the shit out of Bobby Lashley. Yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah, that's what I like. I also I like I also like Dana, but I specific I more so like Kevin Owens beating the shit out of Bobby Lashley. Uh, did you love anything? Uh, I'll say Taker HBK segment. That's like that's what I was gonna go with. I I hate that that's the only thing that like really really stuck out because we as fans often say WWE needs to stop relying on old stars and start pushing new ones. God, yeah, we but do. then they bring back Shawn Michaels and the Undertaker, and it's the best fucking well, segment of the he, night. That's the thing is like there was so much that happened on this show, but everything just kind of had like a weird moment. But it was like Shawn Michaels and the Undertaker. We know what the fuck we're getting, yeah. and then both of them still on top of their game with promo skills, just throwing shit back and forth at each other was great. And for some reason, don't get me wrong, I I still don't believe that they need to build the idea of Triple H versus The Undertaker. There is no reason why we need to be having something devoted to be like, right. guess what, this match is happening. No, you fucking tell me that Triple H versus The Undertaker is happening, I'm going to watch it. Because it's Triple H and The Fucking Undertaker. Yeah. But then when you cap it off with the potential teasing of a Shawn Michaels Undertaker 3, in which potentially Shawn Michaels could win. Right. I'm I'm okay with that. Uh, I still don't think Undertaker needs to be coming back. Like Undertaker no, can chill the fuck off. That could potentially be Taker's last match, especially if HBK wins. Right. But I'll ask, what did you dislike the most? Um, I'm gonna say it's not one specific segment that I disliked the most, but a running theme, and that was the. They did it twice, both with, with both. Uh, Ziggler and McIntyre and Braun matches. The Shut way up. they revealed the the twist surprise opponent. Yeah, essentially it was we we were we were supposed to react to the other person's reaction. Yeah. We were supposed to worry about the B team right. when they ended up having to fight Dolph Ziggler Which, and Drew. That would have worked if you didn't get the beat down like the segment immediately before. Like, yeah. Here's the thing, is I would have liked an idea where, you know, Baron Corbin didn't straight up say, well, hey, if you go beat up the Revival, you can have their tag team title shot. If you would have had had him say, it was like, him say what he said, where he says, hey, if the Revival can't make it, then yeah, I guess I have to put someone in that spot. Yeah. So then you have Dolph and Drew beat the shit out of the Revival while the B team's in the ring and they start walking in the ring and Corbin they just happen to walk by Baron Corbin right. and goes, Well, guess you guys are getting a title yeah. shot. And then 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 it would have been I think it would have made a lot more sense. And then the thing they wanted to do here would have worked perfectly for the Finn Balor Braun match. Yeah. The thing they did here. But then they didn't do it because they had Baron Corbin just go up to Finn before the main event and be like, Hey, you're fighting Braun instead of me. Yeah. 
Well, and and we still could have had the same situation where Cor- you know Corbin walks up to Finn and says, "Hey." Uh, or yeah, he does like the the Tron thing that he did yeah. like two weeks ago, where he's like, "Hey, I'm dealing with the Shield going to jail. I'm dealing with the Revival going to the hospital. I've got all these things to do. So you're gonna fight Braun instead." Yeah, I think it would have been just as effective because we had Braun say to Corbin backstage, "Just hey, give me competition. Just have Finn come out. Like that could have been the last indicator that we got for Bro- for Braun being in the match. Have Finn come out." Then Bronze music hits, and we get that oh shit moment. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was my dislike. Just the handling of those big reveals. Yeah. Um, I I'm just gonna I'm I'm gonna dislike a couple things that are all kind of the same. It's just stuff that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like. Why does Bobby Lash? Why is Bobby Lashley considered a, a threat to the Raw roster? He hasn't done anything out of the ordinary. He hasn't even done anything that special other yeah. than hurt Sami Zayn, which Sami Zayn just gets hurt because that's that's Sami Zayn. Unfortunately, sorry, Sami, I love you, but yeah, you get hurt pretty easy. And when you go against a guy who's made of rocks. Don't let that intimidate you. But Bobby Lashley is, you know, there's nothing scary about Bobby Lashley. Except, apparently, Kevin Hawk is terrified of when he crawls. That's a story for a different time. Uh, Why is Drake Maverick with the Authors of Pain when we've had months of the Authors of Pain by themselves? Do the Authors of Pain all of a sudden need a focus? Did they realize that they were like, oh shit, we probably should have kept Paul around? And then they called Paul, and Paul was like, fuck you. And so we're like, okay, we're going to do something with Drake. Do they think Drake Maverick is Paul Elring? <laughs> Are they two Vince very might. confused men? Vince might. Uh, and then uh, there was something else. Um, 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 what the fuck? There was something else. I don't remember. I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember. There's just there's a lot of things that I'm just like I oh the fucking Bell is just walking in and, and yeah. like off like asking Rhonda hey if you ever need advice for anything and Rhonda's like no you know Natty's been a really good training partner but then they're like no if you need help with like you know a fashion line or writing a book or anything like yeah. You put th- this is almost as bad as their initial try to build for the mixed tag match at WrestleMania 33, when randomly Maurice and Nikki Bella were like running into each other. Yeah. That being said, Raw was okay. Yeah, there, like, it wasn't terrible. I I am very. Here's one thing I, I'll give an honorary love slash. It's a love-hate thing depending on how they go. I'm very intrigued why the certain group of people were the were the ones that attacked the shield. I'm just worried that it's literally just going to be those are the heels. I mean, they were. Yeah, but that's like all the And and for for me there's a silver lining because the Ascension get put on TV, Mike Canellis gets right, put he on got TV. To beat up Dean yeah, Ambrose. Mike Canellis got to punch Dean Ambrose. Oh, next week we'll just have Dean Ambrose versus Mike Canellis. I'm fine with that. I want Mike Canellis on TV. Because Dean's gonna be like, you know what? Out of all those guys. <laughs> yeah, out of all those guys, you punched me. <laughs> Fuck it. Out of all those guys, the, the person I have the most issue with is Mike Canellis. Um but yeah, I mean, just I just hope it makes oh, sense. So a I don't special it. honorary shout out also to Seth getting thrown through that fucking window. Yeah, fucking tore up his elbow. Yeah, that was intense. Like, I hope you're okay, Seth. But at the end of the day, I do still like watching stuff like that. Well, yeah, unintentional blood is better than intentional blood, I yeah. believe. But that is it for the raw review. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Click those links down below. Be sure to comment down below what you did like, dislike, or love about Monday Night Raw. We like having a conversation with you guys. Uh, Be sure to follow us on all various social medias. Check out our podcast. That's uh, the SoundCloud link down below. We're going to get this and all of our regular reviews and podcasts more. You can also check out Reasonable Wrestling Fans. It's reasonable with a W, like wrestling, where... 
We have The List with Kevin Hawk. There's a brand new episode coming out. Uh, his favorite Chikara King of Trios matches. Nice. There's Question of the Week with Thomas Wolf. He asks us questions. We give him answers. We have some other videos that we're looking to post very, very soon. But there's always unboxing videos uh, where we unbox Pro Wrestling Crate, where we get cool Golden Lovers t-shirts and all these cool little micro brawlers. Uh, also got the uh, Funkos from Pro Wrestling Crate. or Well, Pro Wrestling Tees, which is, uh, which is where Pro Wrestling Crate came from so check that stuff out there's other videos that are loosely based around wrestling but for now guys thanks for watching and we'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next the one where they fuck modus we're not actually gonna fuck modus no but like remember there was that time that you <laughs> you said you were gonna fuck yourself and you didn't really fuck yourself that's what we mean when we say fuck modus we're not actually doing it i mean like, we're not. Like, the, the universe is. And we have a video of it. Just him fucking... Modus being fucked over by the universe. Oh. Yeah. Fuck Modus. <laughs> <laughs>